or welcome to Online Church this Monday, Thursday. And we live in extraordinary times, don't we? We can't meet together, but we're still the body of Christ and we can still worship together wherever we are. Monday, Thursday is a time of preparation. Jesus sat down with his disciples in the upper room and they shared the Passover meal. And then Jesus washed each of his disciples' feet. He prepared them for costly love, the love that is humble and self-giving, the love that he would show on the cross. And it's a time of preparation for ourselves. We ask the question, has Jesus washed each of our feet? Have we received the love and forgiveness and generosity of Jesus in each of our lives? And if you like, are we washing each other's feet? Are we sharing Jesus's love and forgiveness and generosity in our treatment of others? Well, Sarah and Jennifer are going to lead us in an act of worship, but uh, we're going to pray uh, to begin our service this evening. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, in these uh, difficult times, prepare us to see our Saviour Jesus Christ afresh. May we glorify the King of the universe who stooped down to wash our feet, to cleanse us so that we might live new lives, loving God and loving each other. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, we're now going to have our reading, which Tasha is going to bring us, and she'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked him. You call me teacher and lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do, as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When we prepare for something, uh, we're making ourselves ready for an upcoming event. Uh, and Jesus, in our passage that Tash has read uh, this evening, uh, is making himself ready and making his disciples ready for what will come the next day on Good Friday. But we live right now in very uncertain times where preparation is, is hard. We live in a, in a crisis of uncertainty, don't we? I think many of us are asking, who are we right now? A lot of those markers of our identity we've, we've lost. For many of us, we can't work. Uh, we can't do our hobbies. We've lost our freedoms. We've lost our capacity to meet with people. Alongside that is there, I think there's, a, there's, there's the, the constant fear of, of losing loved ones. And some of us have, have already lost loved ones to coronavirus. There's a great sense of uncertainty as to, to who we are and, and where we're going. In our reading this evening, though, Jesus is very clear in knowing who he is. Jesus knows exactly who he is and where he is going. We read at the very beginning of our passage, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. So Jesus knew that he was going to die. Jesus uh, had been telling his disciples that he was going to be uh, arrested by the authorities and, and killed in Jerusalem. But Jesus was not a, a victim. Jesus was going willingly. Jesus was going willingly to the cross to bring forgiveness and freedom to those who would receive him. And note too that Jesus is not an innocent bystander. Jesus is innocent, yes. But we read this, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus was divine. He was uh, equal in power with the Father. He was in the closest relationship with, with God. So Jesus was absolutely secure in his Father and in his Father's love. He knew that he'd come from God and that he was returning to God. 
And certain of that love that Jesus uh, knew the Father had for him, we read this. He knew that he had come from God and he was returning to God. And so he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Now let's remember that in that time, washing uh, people's feet was the lowest, most menial task reserved for the most um, lowest and menial servant. No one washed some uh, other people's feet, and certainly not uh, a respected rabbi or teacher. But Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter. Jesus is saying he is secure in his father's love. He's secure in his identity as a beloved son. And so ultimately, he can serve, he can stoop low and love his disciples. By washing his disciples' feet, and then he's saying, go and do likewise, Jesus is saying they can have the same security that he has in his father. So as he says, go and do likewise, it's 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 not just a command, although certainly later on in our passage, Jesus says, I have a new command for you. Uh, love one another as I have loved you. But no, the, the, the capacity to love one another is deeply rooted in the security that that Jesus had, that is, that he was secure in his Father's love, and so we too, in Jesus, can be secure in our Heavenly Father's love. When we believe that Jesus died and rose for us, we are cleansed. Jesus washes each one of us, all of the hidden dirt deep down inside of us, the hidden shame, the guilt, the addictions, all the mess, Jesus cleans us. He washes us clean. And our identity is thoroughly transformed. We become God's children in Jesus. We are loved and accepted by our Heavenly Father in Jesus, just as he loved and accepted the Son, his Son, Jesus, from eternity. So whatever we've lost in these past weeks and whatever we will lose in the coming weeks, we can be secure in our Heavenly Father's love in Jesus. We can have a deeper, more satisfying, eternal security in Jesus and in his Father's love. In our Heavenly Father's love. I'm going to spend uh, a bit of time in prayer now and I'm going to pray, pray two, two prayers for us. First of all I'm going to pray for a prayer of cleansing for all of us, that Jesus will wash us, he'll wash away our fears, our anxiety, all that burdens us in this burdensome time. And second of all, I'm going to pray for the strength of God to help us to love one another as dearly beloved children. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are loved in Jesus, that Jesus has washed us clean. And in this time of uncertainty and fear, take away, wash away all those fears and anxieties. Take away the, the, the hurt, Lord. And Lord, where we are grieving, Lord, comfort us. Send your Holy Spirit to each one of us right now. Fill us with the knowledge of your love and generosity and security that only you can give.
And Heavenly Father, help us to love one another, secure in your love, knowing that whatever happens, we are secure in the love of Jesus. So help us to love one another as best we can, Lord, in supporting each other, in praying for one another, in listening to one another, in grieving with one another, and in rejoicing in the knowledge that this too will pass. That you love each one of us and that we are secure in your love. And we bring our prayers to a close by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Coming to the end of our service this evening, a reminder that tomorrow Dave will be holding a special uh, online Good Friday service, uh, leading us through the events of Good Friday. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll be having our special online Easter celebration 
where we celebrate the risen Jesus. Do follow us uh, on our website and through Facebook and through various social media uh, for upcoming events and for resources that might be helpful to you. Uh, and do uh, get in touch with us if you like to share anything or if you want to speak with anyone, uh, do, do get in contact. For now, um, we'll end with a special, special dismissal for Monday, Thursday. When the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you were not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in peace. Amen.